Um, I'm Robin Meyer. I work for the faculties of Classics and Linguistics, Philology and Phonetics. I teach classical languages, mainly Latin and Greek, occasionally classical Armenian, uh, as well as all kinds of historical linguistics. When we learn languages in school, we almost always have someone standing in front of us, like a teacher or a native speaker of the language, who's trying to very specifically tell us a new thing about the language, either whether that's new vocabulary or a new construction, a new tense, whatever it might be. Um, if you think about how you learned your mother tongue, so whether that's English or French, doesn't really matter, um, you'll remember that that didn't happen, right? Your mother, your father, your uncle or aunt, your grandmothers, they didn't stand in front of you and say, today we're learning the past tense. You just went on and did that learning by doing. So, um, I want to learn French. One way is I go to school or I go to evening school, I go to college, whatever it might be, any form of, form of teaching that could also be a language teacher privately. Um, and I ask them, well, I have zero knowledge of French, please teach me. And uh, depending on the setting, we might go through a textbook, we might listen to tapes or CDs or use online courses, everything is possible. But one way or another, um, what I'm going to do is I look at sentences that get more and more complicated. I learn vocabulary from lists or through online applications or through books. Um, and I acquire a very specialized, very specific set of new skills. So first in a French class I might learn how to say hello and then how to introduce myself, to say where I live and so forth. So that's one way of learning a language. Um, if I want to learn French and I don't want to do it in a formal way, I could just go to France or anywhere where they speak French. Um, and that's quite a daunting thought, right? Just exposing yourself to a culture and a language that you've never been in touch with. So, um, how would that work? Well, I just have to start communicating. Um, and that would probably be quite difficult to begin with. I'd have to pick up, like I did when I learned my mother tongue, um, how to say hello and how to introduce myself. Um, and I think many people would shirk away from that and say, Oof, I, I don't really want to expose myself, it's embarrassing, right? And that's one of those things that, whether you do it in a formal way or uh, completely informally, is always a problem. You know, getting over this barrier to making mistakes, to exposing yourself. It might take a little longer to pick up um, the structures, because no one's specifically teaching me, this is how you form the present tense, this is how you form the past tense. I just be learning by absorption. Like, I'm a sponge, right? Rather than, like, someone pouring water in a bucket, if you like, um, which might be a model for school teaching. Um, but what I will learn is all the friend I need for my everyday use, right? Um, whilst in school, if you have learned a language and you think back to what you were taught after learning how to introduce yourself and, you know, the oh, I've got a friend, who is your friend, my friend, is blah, um, you'd go on to talk about slightly more elevated topics. So when I was young, that used to be um, the environment, the greenhouse effect, politics, and then you very quickly came to literature and you had to talk about you know, the great names, whatever you were reading at the time, that might have been, you know, I was learning English at some point, so I had to talk about Shakespeare and, and about Dickens. Um, and thinking of everyday scenarios. I mean, Shakespeare does come up, but not quite as frequently as I might have to say, I don't have a towel, or my tap is leaking, how do I fix that? Or my telephone doesn't work. And you know, all these things that are quite technical, that are quite specific, but also quite everyday, quotidian, um, those are not necessarily things you learn in school. So one of the issues we face in a university setting or even in a school setting when we want to talk about and learn ancient languages, so for example Biblical Hebrew, Latin, Ancient Greek, um, is that we can't teach them the same way that we would teach French or Spanish or even English in other countries because there are no native speakers of Biblical Hebrew or Classical Greek or Latin anymore. Um, Unfortunately, we haven't yet invented time travel, 
at least not to the extent that we can send someone back and say, okay, go have a word with Cicero, go have a word with the Mosthenes, go have a word with the prophet, prophet Moses. And so we have to overcome these obstacles and um, think about different ways of engaging our students um, in learning ancient languages. And the most common thing um, that we do is just really make students try and actively use their language in writing. So, uh, what form does that take? Well, to begin with, it's just single sentences. So, I, you know, I will have a sentence like, the soldier went to Rome, or, you know, the, the donkey is in the field, and I will suggest that they translate that into the classical language. Um, that's very much how you would do it in French or Spanish or any other modern language as well, right? You have some composition exercises. And then as they progress um, in their command of the language, in their knowledge of the grammatical structures, will give them slightly more difficult challenges. So, um, one of the most difficult things that we can do in prose is to say, well, here's an article from yesterday's times, um, would you please translate that into Greek or Latin? And that has multiple challenges in it. I mean, the most basic one is vocabulary, right? There's concepts that sim simply didn't exist at the time, like smoking, you know, the ancient Greeks didn't have tobacco, so how do you say to smoke? Um, do you just replace it with another bad thing that they were drinking? Uh, or do you paraphrase it? They were inhaling the burnt, f sorry, they were inhaling the fumes of burnt herbs, burnt intoxicating herbs, something like that. So what we want students to do when they translate into classical languages is think very hard what they're actually translating. And that also leads us a little to why it is actually interesting to learn classical languages, because they make you think quite hard about what you're actually reading. Often because they communicate in ways quite different from modern languages. They have different concepts. Some of them they lack, some of them we lack. They are far more differentiated when it comes to certain concepts like love, you know, famously Latin and Greek have more words for love than English does. Um, and that means that these are words that we could translate just as love in English, but that would be a little broad. So we might, for example, think of something like Latin caritas, which is a very um, caring word for love, as opposed to, for example, amor, which is a slightly more um, you know, normal standard, possibly slightly more sexual word for love, but can also just mean a love between friends. And then there's words like dilectio, um, which is, for example, a uh, word for the love for or of God in Tertullian. So um, I think the most basic answer is that if you're in school and you have the opportunity to learn a language, whether formally or informally, do take it. Um, language learning is a fantastic thing to do, and simply because it does not only provide you with a skill, speaking another language, but also with a new way of approaching a different culture, um, of approaching life, of getting someone else's perspective on new topics. Um, and it just teaches you a set of skills, and that is how to you know, pace yourself, how to learn in general. And that isn't just learning a language, it's learning anything. Learning can happen everywhere, in every kind of setting. Every person might have a different preference, Every person might feel more comfortable with one form of learning or the other. But the key point is that you can learn a language wherever and however you like.